Hello, I'm Mr. Howard. In this video, we're going to be looking at minimum and maximum values for functions. And this is for my pre-calculus students, so we're going to be looking at it from that perspective. Uh, you also talk about minimum and maximum values in Algebra 1 and also in Algebra 2. But in those two courses, you're, you're really um, mainly looking at parabolas. So uh, if you recall, if you had a, a normal parabola that, that opens upward like this, you would have a a minimum, an absolute minimum down here at the vertex, and if you had a uh, parabola that was flipped over that opened downward like this, you would have an absolute maximum up at the top here for uh, where the vertex was. So that's what you're used to, but we need to, uh, with pre-calculus, we need to get prepared for what we're going to see and how we're going to talk about these values in pre-calculus and then on into calculus. So we need some some new uh, new vocabulary here. So the first thing that we're asked to do here, it says specify the intervals where this function is increasing. Remember, increasing means going up from left to right, right? That was our definition, up from left to right. So this thing is going up from left to right from right here at this point where it changes from, it's decreasing, 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 and it turns and it starts to increase. And it continues to increase until this point right here where it goes from increasing and turns back down to decrease. So remember when we talk intervals we need to specify our x coordinates. So that's an x value of negative 1, 2 right here. So it is increasing from negative 2 to an x value of uh, that would be 4. Okay, And we're going to put that in parentheses for this interval because we can't tell if negative 2 and 4 are included because really at this point where it turns uh, we really can't define uh, whether it is increasing, decreasing, or constant right at that point where it's, it's turning, right at that maximum here and this minimum here. Alright, next, specify the intervals where this function is decreasing. Well, it's decreasing, notice here it's going down from left to right since it goes off to infinity like this it's actually decreasing from left to right from negative infinity all the way up to this point uh, this x coordinate negative 2 remember we're specifying the x coordinates when we talk intervals and uh, so we can put a union here or we could put comma either way and it's also decreasing from this coordinate 4 on and since it we have an arrow here that's going on to positive infinity here we're going to put those in parentheses same thing we can't tell right at these points if it's increasing uh, decreasing or constant so we just put parentheses we're not putting brackets there alright so there are two intervals over which this thing is decreasing alright so let's look at some uh, just some notes here so it says maximum, since f of x above is increasing to the left of x equals 4. So they're talking about uh, to the left of 4, right this way, right? And uh, decreasing to the right of x equals 4, so this way from 4. Uh, we have a local maximum, local maximum. That's a, a word that we need to get used to, a local maximum at x equals 4. What is the local maximum function value? Well, that's going to be the y-coordinate, and that it would be 9. So the local maximum function value, f of x value, means the y-value is 9. So that point would be 4, 9. Notice that a local maximum is not necessarily an absolute maximum. So we need to get those two uh, the difference there. The local maximum means right in this area its maximum y-coordinate is right up here at the top here at 4 comma 9 which we have established. Um, but it's not an absolute maximum because this thing over here goes off to infinity. So that's what we're talking about. On the left side of the, this particular graph the function continues to go higher without any limit so there's no absolute maximum. So this thing is going off to infinity um, but we can call this right here because we change, we're changing from increasing to decreasing, we can say it's got a local maximum right here. All right, so that's the important new vocabulary, this local maximum. All right, minimum, since f of x above is decreasing to the left of x equals negative 2, so over here it's decreasing, and increasing to the right of negative 2, so this way it's increasing right here, 
uh, it has a local minimum at x equals negative 2. So right here, notice it's decreasing, 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 and then it changes to increasing right here, right at this negative 2, which we specified, this negative 2 coordinate showing up here. Okay, so that means it has a local minimum, so there's that word again, local minimum, uh, right here at x equals negative 2. What is the local minimum function value? That's going to be the y coordinate of negative 5. So that point would be negative 2, negative 5, where we have a local minimum. Local minimum here, local maximum up here. All right. Um, and then it's going to tell us here, notice that a local minimum is not necessarily an absolute minimum. On the right side of this particular graph, so over here, talking about over here, the function continues to go lower without any limit, so it takes off to negative infinity, and there's no absolute minimum that we can define because it goes off to negative infinity. Negative infinity is undefined, so therefore there's no absolute minimum. All right, so there's some vocabulary for us. Uh, next, example one. This We just have a few examples in this particular video. Okay, example one. Consider the function f of x where increasing intervals are given by negative infinity to negative 5 and negative 2 to 3. Decreasing intervals are given by negative 5 to negative 2 and 3 to positive infinity. Okay, roughly sketch the function and give the x values of any local maxima and or minima. So uh, this Maxima, that's plural, and minima, uh, that would be plural for uh, multiple uh, situations where you have minimums, okay? So uh, it says roughly sketch the function and give the x values of any local maxima and or minima. So if we are increasing, so increasing here, and then we'll use another color for decreasing so we keep this straight on what they're saying here, right there. All right, so if we're increasing from negative infinity, um, uh, so that's going to be negative infinity, and we're going to be talking about x coordinates, so that's out here. So we, we need to be increasing, so that means this thing is going to be like this, because we need to be increasing on the left-hand side, and we go, we continue to increase all the way to negative 5, so we'll put negative 5 right here like this, and um, it's also increasing from negative 2 to 3, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Obviously, if it's this part has to be in blue because we're increasing, that's what we've decided to use. So from negative infinity to negative 5, we are increasing. Therefore, it must be that at negative 5, we either start going constant or we start decreasing. Well, let's read what it says about decreasing. Uh, from negative 5 to negative 2, we decrease. So negative 5 to negative 2 and it doesn't matter how much we're only looking at this from what, whether it's increasing or decreasing so that's an x coordinate these are x values here at negative 2 um, so from negative 5 to negative 2 we're decreasing so that must mean at negative an x value of negative 2 we either start going constant or we start increasing again and we go back up here and notice that once again from negative 2 to positive 3 Okay, so that we're going to make that point right there be positive 3. So from negative 2 to positive 3, we're increasing again. And from 3 to positive infinity, we're decreasing. So we're going to go and we'll just draw an arrow like this. So that is approximately what this thing would look like. Okay, so we're increasing from negative infinity to negative 5, just like it says. We're decreasing from negative 5 to negative 2, just like it says. We are then increasing in from negative 2 to positive 3, just like it says. And then we finally decrease from positive 3 on to infinity. Again, make sure that you get this straight. We're using x coordinates here uh, to define this, these intervals. All right, let's look at example 2 next. Okay, here we have example two. So we've got this uh, relation or function here. And it says, what are the locations of the local maxima? All right, well, the local maxima is going to have to be a peak like that right there. That, that's going to be it. So that's going to be an x coordinate of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we can say at x equals seven justify the above answer okay well if there is a local maxima this must be true we are increasing I'm gonna abbreviate increasing uh, to the on the left of 7 and then we start decreasing at the right of 7 okay 
So increasing to the left and decreasing to the right means there must be a local maximum. That's the only way that that's possible, the little hump here. Okay. What is the local function maximum? Okay, function maximum means the f of x value, the y value. So that's one, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that would be at y equals six. So when it asks us that, it's asking for the y value. All right, what are the locations of the local minima? Okay, local, again, just like when we said local up here, local means there's going to be a valley in this case. So that's going to be like right there. Okay, so the locations, it's asking for the x-coordinates. So that's 1, 2, approximately at x equals 3 there. Justify the answer. Okay, well, uh, this thing is decreasing. So decreasing to the left of 3. And then it is increasing, abbreviating again, to the right of 3. So in order for it to decrease to the left and then turn and increase to the right, that must be a local minimum value. So what is the local function minimum? Remember that means the y coordinate, so that's going to be at y equals negative 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 4. Okay. What is the absolute maximum function value? Well, we do have an absolute maximum um, function value because this thing has a terminating dot right here. There's no arrow that it goes off to infinity. So that would be uh, negative one, t I'm going to count up here so I can see it better, negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that would be at x, x equals negative eight. What is the absolute minimum function value? Well, see this thing drops off to negative infinity, um, so therefore there is none. There is none. There is no minimal absolute minimum because it goes off to negative infinity which is undefined okay so it it goes to negative infinity all right okay uh, over here give the intervals over which the function is decreasing okay well that would be from over here which we said uh, was an x value of negative 8 so it's decreasing from negative 8 um, all the way to right here at this local minimum um, and let's see where did we find that um, local minimum to be uh, looking back through our answers just to make this easier that was at an x value of 3 right here so that would be to 3 okay so that's one interval and then we can draw a union because there are actually two it's also decreasing from this local maximum value at we called that uh, 7 right so that's from 7 and then it continues decreasing on to infinity because it drifts to the slowly is drifting to the right here so that would go off to infinity so the uh, two intervals will be from negative 8 to 3 and then from 7 to uh, positive infinity next give the intervals over which the function is increasing well that's only going to be right here at 3 with parentheses to this other uh, right here at this hump this local maximum which was at 7 so that's the only interval over which this thing is going up from left to right okay alright let's look at one more example and this video will be done alright last example for uh, this lesson. Example 3. Use a graphing calculator to find the minima and maxima of the function f of x equals uh, 4x cubed minus 8x squared plus 2x plus 2. Make a sketch of the graphed function. Okay, so we need to pull up our graphing calculator. I've gone ahead and put the function in 4x cubed minus 8x squared plus 2x plus 2. And we graph that and we see uh, just like we see here it is a cubic it's got a cubic shape um, so really we're concerned with I'm gonna bring this over and, and that way we can uh, kinda talk about it a minute here so looking at the graph picture here we're really concerned um, with this little area right here and then this little area right here where, where we're turning we're, we're increasing 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 turn to decreasing decreasing 
turn and increase again. So those are the two points that we need to find. So we can actually, uh, I think, set up our window a little bit uh, better. So let's make that like negative 4 to 4. And then our y values, I mean, that's pretty tight there. So we'll call that uh, y minimum negative 2. And we'll make our y maximum 5 and see um, if that helps us any at all to help see this yeah that's a little better so let's let's bring this graph over and that'll be a little better to talk about it so zooming in same graph here but uh, zooming in is actually going to let us uh, find these values so we're looking for that local maximum and that local minimum right there those are the two things that we're looking for so we're going to use our calculator to do that our calculator will find those values by uh, using the calc menu so we're gonna go second calc and first we need to find that maximum we could find the minimum first if we wanted but we're gonna choose second calc and then option four for maximum uh, it asks us for left bound you probably remember this from algebra 1 or algebra 2 when you were finding the vertex of a parabola using this um, but we just need to get left of this maximum. So my cursor's left of it. That's good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, right bound. Okay, I can either arrow over or I can type in a value. Well, I can see that X is 1 right here. So I could type in, uh, I could arrow over again or just type in like 0.5. So X equals 0.5 is definitely somewhere right in here. So it's definitely right of it, right of the maximum. On guess, I just hit enter and let my calculator find it. So I'm gonna bring this over and that will be our answer instead of writing all of that out. I'm just gonna going to put that right there. So there's our maximum right here. Uh, let's uh, draw an arrow, so that's our maximum. Now let's bring our calculator up and let's find our minimum. So second trace, option three for minimum, left bound. Uh, here's x equals 1, so I'm going to type that in so I don't have to arrow over. Hit enter, so that tells it I'm left of where I want you to find the minimum at. Uh, right bound, we could use um, 1.5. That'll work. I'm just going to type that in. 1.5. Enter. So my calculator jumps there. On guess, I'm just going to hit enter, and my calculator finds that for me. So I'll bring this over, paste that in. And just so you understand what the calculator is doing there, when you put the left bound and then the right bound, your calculator is going to search on this graph and run um, an algorithm basically. And limiting the uh, left and right bound just limits the amount of space that your calculator has to look for. And it, the way the algorithm works, it's going to find the absolute um, minimum y value in this case or maximum y value in this case between those two x coordinates. That's basically why you have to put the left bound and the right bound in. Okay, so here's our minimum and uh, we could write all of this out but since we can bring the pictures of the graphs in we'll just do that. So that would be it. That's all you have to do. So it's second trace, uh, option four for maximum, option three for minimum. Set your left and right bound and uh, you can either type those values in or actually arrow over. Okay, this video is done and I will see you in the next one.